Okay, so there's a movie. That's the one. And that movie. What are these fools doing out there? Yeah, that's still the one. I decided to watch How the Gringo Stole Christmas to top off 2023 for some reason. Well, actually, I do have a reason. It was because it was one of those covers where I read the title, saw George, and thought, this is gonna be kind of racist, isn't it? They can't wait to see the spinoffs of this title format. Now, I don't need to tell you much to have you guess the entire movie just off the cover alone. My buddy and editor Scout must have felt the same way because he suggested I should make a bingo card before watching, which I did, and coined it the gringo card. Well, well, gingo. The Art and Fit. I did not watch the trailer, I just stared at the cover. I took my knowledge of George's stand-up, the George Lopez show, and what I assumed was gonna be an interracial rom-com to make the perfect George Lopez movie bingo card. With classics like a border slash build the wall joke, turbulence in the relationship that was caused by George is later fixed by George, I laugh at racism, and my free space, George makes a funny face. As you can see, I assumed there would be just a lot of low hanging fruit to be had, and I wasn't wrong, but I have so much more to talk about, such as today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. So Deepwater is on Hulu in the US, right? But if I wanted to watch the Deepwater series from 2016 that has, Nothing to do with the book. What if? Well, I would just use NordVPN to tell the internet I'm actually in the UK. Switching sides. And now I can watch that on Netflix UK, no problem. What if you wanted to watch the entire Lord of the Rings collection on Netflix Belgium? Trick question, nobody wants to watch Lord of the Rings, but the option's there. I mean, you can even save some money. The same product bought through the same e-commerce site may cost less in some countries than in others. There's so much you can do. I use NordVPN on all of my devices. I can use it on up to six. It is a 30 day money back guarantee. And right now you can get a two year plan at a huge discount plus four additional additional months for free when you use my link nordvpn.com slash mr gg that's nordvpn.com slash mr gg or click the link in the description below and thank you nord for sponsoring this video i have a weird relationship with george lopez one of the most famous mexicans to break through in the industry stand up movies tv the george lopez show was right up there with the fresh prince for me back in the day and i can confidently say it was because of george but yes uh I'm gonna talk about a bad movie that he stars in that was just released this month. And I do wanna quickly say, I vividly remember watching George's old stand-up. I think it was Why You Crying? With my family while we were laughing, eating pizza. <laughs> Mexicans, <laughs> won't we do it? But I remember as time went on, having the feeling like his comedy was starting to become a bit more stale for me. It didn't seem to necessarily evolve with time. It seemed to all very much bank on the same gimmicks and really just depend on George's delivery, which he can be great at. You see that still in this movie. Like the writing, which he didn't write it by the way, if he did, I would have swept that bingo card easy day. But the writing is exactly what you expect it to be, and less. But George still made me laugh with a few of his one-liners because he's just good at that. The movie is split into adorable, festive chapters for really no good reason except to remind you that this is a Christmas movie. Because it's not at all. When I started watching this movie, I didn't think that was gonna be an issue. But if this is a Christmas movie, then so is Legally Blonde and Oppenheimer. So this is Leif. He makes video games for a living because he's white. <laughs> he's in a relationship with Claudia and Claudia's dad is George Lopez. His name is Benny in the movie, but George Lopez is playing George Lopez. And Leif decides to surprise Claudia by bringing her home to East LA for the holidays. You might have noticed while my mouth was moving that this film doesn't look the greatest. This movie clearly has a very low budget, but I wanna stress, I know what bothers me the most about this movie, and it's not the fact that you made it with V-Bucks, it's what you decided to do with that budget. Because whoever was in the editing booth made this movie significantly worse. But let's check in on our bingo card real quick. They're very weird camera angles. Feliz Navidad, what's that? <laughs> 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 the two for one? Okay, we gotta watch out. Huh? I think that counts as a Mexican was. I'll take that. I was going more for, <laughs> but I'll count that. Man, this film is, I say this with all due respect, ugly. So a girl lives so far from home. You're kidding, right? I'm Ooh, I would have never been so bold to put record scratch 
in the bingo card. A real life record scratch. Quest love on the ones and twos. This Keem Badge Vine audio design. It's gonna suck because I'm just gonna keep thinking of the, I uh, don't know yet, but what I'm assuming will be the objectively superior guess who, right? Is that what it's called? Ashton Kutcher, Bernie Mac? I mean, Bernie was just a maestro in that movie. Funny I brought that movie up. Now let it be known, I'm a sucker for rom-coms. I talk all this shit about all these movies that people work really hard on. So some of you may think that I sip scotch while watching Citizen Kane in my free time. Incorrect. Although the art of the rom-com has slowly died, I love the classics. Just Friends, Fifty First First Dates, Along Came Pauly, Forgetting Sarah Marshall, What Happens in Vegas, A Sucker I Tell You. And this movie is, on paper, a rom-com. So the ball's in their court. Emphasis on balls. The number one problem with this movie is the music. Who the fuck would have guessed that one? It's the music. We got a lot of. Now that's what I call Kevin MacLeod playing in the back. But that's not really the problem. The problem is it's loud and overused. There are so many moments where George is just talking to somebody for like 30 seconds and it doesn't need anything to accompany it. But whoever was behind the scenes felt like they always had to force this mood upon you. Like maybe they realized this movie sucks and I need to do this so they know to laugh. It's like they're using it as like a laugh track. George is talking, this should be funny. So let's play this. It's not needed. So not only is music there when it's completely unnecessary, but then it also just doesn't match what's happening on screen. The prime example of this is where George inevitably ruins Christmas and Leif stands up to him. So we start getting this triumphant music. He's like, listen here, Senor Sanchez. I love your daughter and I'm sick of you being racist. And as the mood dies down, uh, Leif sadly walks away being like, Merry Christmas. And George's daughter is distraught that her father would do this to her. And George's wife is there giving him a piece of her mind. And this is how that sounds. Happy holidays. Wait, 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 don't leave. Don't leave it to have these goddamn presents. I mean, I must. No, pues ya. You got the party you wanted, no? Que padre, que animado. I hope you're proud of yourself, eh? What do you say we go check in on that bingo card? Am I the first white guy to set foot in this neighborhood or? No, 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 no. Mm -mm. Most of the police are white. That was funny. <laughs> I think that counts as I laugh at racism. Look at that, so quick laughing at racism. I was gonna say lowrider too. Fuck, man. What is this music? It's a wild cholo appears by the way. No, 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 where I come from, if they catch you in a position like that, you'll get beat up. Or you want me to put the present? <laughs> Was that a gay joke? Well, that's a gay joke. That's a gay joke. That's a thousand percent George making a gay joke. Let's fucking go. Bang. I forgot to mark the free space. George makes a funny face. Bow. Oh, Are they gonna do the guess who bit? Where it's like, oh, is this your Uber driver or some shit? Yeah, be like, okay, man, I'll see you. Five stars. <laughs> it's the guess who bit. It's a pleasure to meet you. Say amigo. Say amigo so I can get the spot. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. I've never been in a Mexican home before. Uh, a Mexican home? Okay. Okay. Family meeting in a Mexican home right now. What, what do you think? We sleep on Chile? Chingo? George is still pretty funny at delivering lines. I can't take that away from him. A disapproval of an interracial relationship. I got it. I mean, I. it's pretty easy to guess the premise off the cover alone. Why did the Cholos play such a big part in this? The fact that I can still hear their music right now in the background. Phenomenal question, past Gigi. So there's these three Cholos that are posted up across George's house. The entire fucking movie. They're portrayed as like bad, but three stooges bad, but are also included in their family activities. Even though at the very beginning of the movie, they heckle George about how fuckable his daughter is. Yo, don't talk about my daughter, man. Don't look at her. Hey, come on, the Holmes. I bet you she's all telenovela style. I have kidney stone. Don't crack me. I got this. Be careful. We got it. He's going to fix it, but George is going to walk in and then attack him. Everything's out of focus. It's porque es blanco. Dad. <laughs> that was so awkwardly put in. No, it's all messed up. I can help you with that. Really? Ooh, incoming. Oh, well, look Look at this. Look at the irony. It's a white guy doing landscaping. Did that white boy just teach that Mexican how to landscape? He's like an artist, fool. He's like Picasso, is it? Is that legend? Yes, it's legend. Okay, so I do recognize another actor. That counts. Actor I recognize besides George. 
And yes, uh, that is Legend. If you don't know, Legend Forever is a social media personality, a pretty big one. So that made me think, wait a minute, I think I know why the Cholas play such a big role. Each one of them has a substantial following, and movies hiring social media stars, giving them opportunities, while also mutually benefiting from their audiences, isn't anything new. It makes me think of Medea's Boo, which had like Fousey, Liza, Lexi Pantera, also distributed by Lionsgate. So in total, in this movie, we have, as far as I know, Legend, Kenna Love Cisco, the two guys behind the Mexican Ways account, and Tony Direx, which totals a fuck ton of followers, millions and millions. The movie clearly had a vision in terms of how it was gonna be pushed. And this is no stray at any of these guys. I'm happy for them and their success. They're very excited to be a part of this movie, and why wouldn't they be? If I got in a movie with George Lopez, I wouldn't shut the fuck up about it either. So I do just wanna make it clear. I'm making fun of the uninspired movie with questionable decisions. Not these young Latino men getting paid. Get your money, gentlemen, and get more than that. Now. The boldest guess I had on my bingo card was this one. This is a bold one, but George makes some joke like, this is how you know Santa Claus was Mexican. And I didn't get it. I didn't hit that one. But uh, if my read wasn't just one pivot off, oh damn, I was close. What? What's wrong with the flag? Dad, it's Christmas, not Cinco de Mayo. Red, white, and green. Jesus was Mexican. Okay, you said Jesus is Mexican, not Santa Claus. It's the same exact joke, just I'm one off. Damn, I think I missed that one. Hey, he ran across country so fast and they had a Border Olympics here where I went gold. Border joke, border joke, border joke! Almost got bingo. I just need someone to say quinceanera. Also, so far this has had nothing to do with Christmas. <laughs> Wait. Oh. Damn, I was going for the almost sex scene. Wait, what is it? Nintendo 64 controllers and they're playing fucking cyberpunk Fortnite? Bash millennials, bash millennials, back in my day. A real game is played on a field 120 yards long and 80 yards deep. Ashy Millennials, that counts. Come on, stay alert, stay alert. Okay, yeah, I would've gotten it anyways. He's about to overdo it and hurt the dad. They didn't deviate at all from the outline, man. If they double that up with the, uh, uh, your head, it's swollen. No, it's just like that. Make my day, George. Why isn't Grandpa here with us? He went south to Mexico. Cause all he ever wanted was a Mexican Christmas. That was not on my bingo card. Mr. Sanchez. I want to marry your daughter. I would like to ask for your daughter's hand in marriage. What is the editing for this portion? Is he just gonna take the stick and like slam it out of anger? Dad, Christmas is supposed to be for everyone and you have done every possible thing to destroy it. I know, huh? It won't matter which way I speak to you because you hate this gringo. You need to leave! Wait, I just thought of a joke. You need to leave! Get a fucking job, guys! Now, I don't want to make this last criticism, but I wouldn't let another movie get away with it. There's some behind the scenes available to the movie, and I've heard the cast have conversations how this movie does something. It's like that one, this is the end gif, like the movie patching up race relations. They talk about the movie like it's Fruitvale Station. Guys, it's a dated interracial rom-com trying to use an aging George and rising stars to be profitable. I love you guys. But let's call a spade a spade. No racist is watching how the gringo stole Christmas and turning their life around. Scary Movie 3 flipped more bigots in this movie. Like I heard Legend talk about the movie and, he, and Legend said the movie made him cry. When? Why did you cry, Legend? <laughs> I get it, I get it. I'll shut up. I'm sorry I watched the extra footage you guys put out there. I couldn't ignore it. Let's see if I can at least get one happy ending and hit my bingo. I don't think I'm gonna get bingo. Someone please say quinceanera. Okay, so. Turbulence in the relationship that was caused by George is later fixed by George. I think that's inevitable. So if I get that, then I would need maybe just a George Lopez big head joke to get a bingo. A gesture is worth a thousand words. Man, this movie has really slowed down at this point. Look at the dog. Wait, oh, I, I thought the cholos were gonna help. Like the car was gonna break down. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh we keep moving, baby. We'll go steal the car. We'll meet you there, homie. I thought they were gonna make a, a packing Mexicans in a car joke. They didn't do that. Bold how the gringo stole Christmas. Bold. Baby. Hi. We 
you marry me? Okay, turbulence in the relationship that was caused by George is later fixed by George. Marked! Hell yeah, the dancing montage we didn't know we needed. They just gave up near the end of this film, I'll be honest. Is this a runtime thing? Tootsie doesn't see color, doesn't see race. She's blind. She is kind of blind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I didn't hit bingo. I am am flabbergasted that I didn't hit bingo. Okay, the ones I needed, I almost had a diagonal. I needed a George Lopez big head joke, which they had the setup, they didn't do it. The other one I needed was someone says quinceanera. High key, might have missed it in some of the dialogue. As far as I know, no one said it. I feel like that was, that was a gimme. Looking at the other ones I missed out on, almost sex scene? No, I was kind of thinking of like uh, them starting to make out and then it's interrupted by like George or something. That didn't really happen. They had a kiss that was interrupted. White guy saying amigo, he was calling him senor and all this shit. Not really the same thing. The bold one that I really wanted to hit. This is a bold one, but George makes some joke like, this is how you know Santa Claus was Mexican. Instead, it was Jesus. George went with Jesus on that same exact premise of a joke, though. I'll take half credit on that. It wouldn't have affected the bingo, but I take half credit. He didn't say, I know, huh? He didn't do that. He didn't imit He didn't do like the stereotypical white guy voice. Like, yeah, Chad, you know what I'm doing, dude? Packing Mexicans in a car joke. I thought we had the setup for that. Didn't take it. My gringo card is kaput. Nothing. I, I, didn't, I didn't get bingo. Honestly, not as lowbrow as I thought the movie was gonna be. Now, does that mean it's uh, good? I'm just gonna say it, it was not as bottom of the barrel as I clearly was setting it up to be. How oh, the Gringles stole Christmas. What a beautiful the tale as old as time. As old as 2023. Little buzzer beater ball drop before we cap off the year. I was very much trying to hit a milli subs in 2023. You can hear it on my videos. But alas, I now have to bring up this tweet from exactly one year ago. If I don't hit 1 million subs in 2023, make sure to tell the subreddit I fell off. Although I've never been happier to fail. We've had an incredible year. I've done so much I wanted to do and you guys are supporting the content like none other. What else could I ask for? Send the subreddit my regards. And as always, even in 2024, I am Mr. Gigi and I am out. Oh. <laughs>